Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about a few very important advanced red claw tips that'll help you catch a lot more red claw. And we're starting right now. But before we do that, let's have a look at these pots in action. They're just so, so awesome and catching so many red claw crayfish yabbies at the moment. Okay, so here we have our 70 centimeter collapsible pots and today uh, we're going to talk about uh, some um, advanced red claw tips. Now, if you have a look at these uh, entrances here, you'll see the rings are facing upwards. Now, I'm going to show you how to adjust them. So you got ropes that are in the middle here and what you do, you just pull. I'll just get my big head out of the way, sorry for the shadow. Um, if you pull these two ropes together, that increases the angle of the rings facing upwards. Now, you need the rings to be facing upwards because they're gonna catch you a lot more red claw. If they're just straight rings, they'll walk in and walk out and, they'll, and you'll lose a lot more red claw. These um, openings are really, really good. They've got a, a clip here that just clips over and you just clip it on the side and it closes right up. Um, so um, I probably need to make it a little bit tighter than that. So if you pull it in, that way and then that closes it all up there you can tighten that up you can adjust that with your knots um, you can adjust that with uh, tying, tying it a bit tighter um, now these um, these struts are really strong the frames are strong and they're really really worth the extra money because they're catching a lot more red claw um, now let's have a talk about some bait containers now if you just got a mayonnaise bottle just um, an empty mayonnaise bottle, wash it out, get a hot soldering iron, put um, holes in all of the sides and the angles, um, and then just put a cable tie on the end, and then cable tie inside the pot and cut that off and on, but this cable tie stays on. So that's one way of doing, that's one way of doing a bait container. Uh, I'll show you this way, this is probably the best way that I've seen. This one's actually a clip-in bait container. And what it actually does, you clip it in from the outside with the blue washer, but that stays on the bottom and inside your bait in your pot. So uh, a really good way, this bait box. And if you want any of these, let me know because I can, um, I can uh, sell you these and do an order for those. Clip in bait feeders or clip in bait containers worth every cent. A, a little bit more, but they're a lot more convenient and the holes are the biggest holes I've seen. So if you've got the big donut style dog biscuits, they work really well. If you've got cheese or, or you've got sweet potato, these work really, really well because you clip them in and clip them out, it stays inside, and it is probably the best ones that I've seen. Okay, so here's another option for a bait feeder. If you want something really, really, really cheap, go to Kmart, buy these for $1.75. Uh, and you get three or four, I think it is, and then you just get a hot soldering iron. Again, you just go to town, put it in all the sides underneath and also on the top. Okay, so that's uh, three ways that you can uh, make your own bait containers or bait boxes or bait feeders. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about briefly about the labeling. So this is the size of the label you need to put on your pot. Um, and I'm just gonna show you, this is what you need to put on your labels. These are the new requirements from fisheries that are coming out probably end of the month. So you need to have your surname, your street name, and your suburb. And then you need to put that. Now these are a lot bigger for filming purposes. So you need to put the, these on the smaller labels and onto your pots. So that'll need to go on your pots, regardless whether you're in a boat or whether you're land-based. I haven't forgotten about you guys. If you guys are land-based on the bank, what you need to do is put a label with your surname on the end of the rope, and that's it. So then that goes on the end of your rope, and uh, if you're a land-based fisherman, with your surname on it. Now, this will go on your pot regardless, whether you're uh, land-based or whether you're in a boat, 
with the float. So that needs to go on there. So like I said before, the labels are this size uh, with that writing on it and that goes on to the pot there, cable tied on. So there you have it guys, I've given you a few more tips. Now these uh, pots are, wo are working so, so well at the moment. So they're catching, I think um, two of these pots caught over 200 and then one of these pots caught 180 and one. So if you want the best pots, and send me a message fishingwithsteved at gmail.com and I'll be able to send you an order. So I hope you really enjoyed these tips. Oh, just one more tip that I forgot about is on the entrance here, you can get gutter guard and you can cut it off so it goes across where my hand is, cable tie it all in here and then that makes it easier for the red claw to walk in. Now I don't think you personally need that but I do know a lot of anglers that are using gutter guard and cable tying it on the entrance bottom and they are catching a lot a lot of red claw. So I think you could just try it for yourself, let's go to hardware and just uh, get your gutter guard rolls, uh, cut it into length so it's going to cover where my hand is here, cable tie it on and try it for yourself and see if it works and improves your catch rate on red claw crayfish yabbies. A lot, of, a lot of new things happening in the rules and regulations. Um, I would recommend to jump onto fisheries and to check out their website because there's always things changing and happening. Um, towards the end of this month, uh, things are going to be changing. So like these labels, for example. Um, and uh, so have a look on the fisheries website and Facebook page, stay up to date and be um, familiar with all the rule changes and all the regulation changes. Uh, if you want any of these pots, just send me an email at fishingwithstevedd at gmail.com and I'll be able to um, uh, give you an order for these pots. They are so, so, so good. They are catching so many at the moment. Okay, so we're in the boat and uh, just check out how flat and how collapsible these are. These are 70 centimetre, four entry um, red claw yabby uh, crayfish pots and uh, you can stack, a, what, you're allowed four per person so you can stack four on top of each other and they're only going to be about this high. So they are really, really compact and they really take up a lot less room. Well, just pulled the pot out, and she is absolutely loaded. It is chockers. These pots certainly do the trick. There would have to be over a hundred in that pot, without a doubt. And there's some big ones in there too. So there's a nipper on that one. I'm guessing probably 150, 200 in there. There's a big fella here. Hey. Well, that pot does the trick, mate. Look at that. The bottom is just black from red claw. That is cool. All right. I'm going home and count them. Oh, 
all baited, no holes. Always a good idea to check the holes in the sides and even underneath. Great exercise, guys. Oh, yes. That's what we want to see. There's some rippers in that one. Beautiful. Okay, just turn these around so you can see all this. That's a, that's a whopper, that one there. Eh? That's a real big one. So is that one. come they get and they get bigger even than that but that's a great start put on my nest gear make them go to sleep okay old bait out new bait in new bait in cable tie it's around the frame and away we go do that one I reckon if you do one cable tie right there that'll be sweet So as you can see folks these cable ties really do a very important job and uh, so the light just can't undo them. All right, let's turn these up. Turn these around. All right. And away we go. How much we got so far? Now they're very docile those um, at the moment because the ice is putting them to sleep. They're pretty much nearly asleep, and uh, it's a good way of um, of uh, killing them humanely. Okay guys, we're just going to show you a little tip here. When the rings in the entrances get rusty, uh, what Ray does, he puts big cable ties in the entrance like that there. So I hope it's not too close, pull it back a bit, 
So that's a good tip. And also very important to do that because if um, the rings get rusty, um, especially the, the bigger uh, 100 mil uh, uh, entrances, uh, the turtles can get in. Uh, especially if you're using cat food, um, tin cat food. Uh, we don't use tin cat food. We recommend using dog biscuits. Also, sunlight soap puts phosphates back in the water, which is like putting fertilizer in the water. So I wouldn't really recommend that either. Um, stick to the dog biscuits. So there you go, guys. There's a little bit of tip that um, works really well for Ray. Ray's been doing it for a lot of years and a lot of great tips. Today, we're gonna talk about the best five baits to use for reef claw fishing. And we're starting right now. Well, today we're talking about the best five baits for reef claw fishing, freshwater crayfish fishing. And number five, is watermelon skins. Now people say that the red claw are vegetarians but I can tell you they are scavengers. I've seen them devour catfish totally down to the skeleton. So I do tell you from experience they like eating meat as well and they are scavengers. But watermelon skins, try that. Cut it up, put it in your bay containers and happy days. Number four is cat food. Cat food now I can tell you, I've heard a lot of people talking about cat food really catches the big, uh, the bigger uh, red claw, especially when it's amongst the sticks and timber. Up at Somerset Dam, I've heard of a lot of uh, locals getting that uh, bigger uh, red claw uh, using catfish, uh, using cat food. But be careful of turtles. If you're, if it's in the rivers, be careful of catfish. Of um, of uh, Turtle, sorry, and um, but in the dams are okay. Okay, number three is rock melon. Rock melon is very, very popular with a lot of anglers, and it works really, really, really well. So that's number three best baits for red claw freshwater crayfish. Okay, number two is par cooked sweet potato or half cooked sweet potato, and. That leaves us down to number one, best bait for red claw freshwater crayfish fishing, and it is the good old dog biscuits. Now the good old dog biscuits, um, you can buy them, they're pretty cheap, about five or six bucks in the shop. But the beauty about dog biscuits, it lasts three to five days, so you can leave your pots in longer. Whereas if you're using vegetables, you have to do it like the same day or the same weekend. So here, there you go guys, the best red claw freshwater crayfish baits. Number five, watermelon skins. Number four, cat food. Number three, rock melon. Number two, sweet potatoes, par cooked, half cooked. And number one is the good old dog biscuits. So I hope you liked this video guys. I hope you really enjoyed uh, this uh, crammed uh, video which I've given a few extra tips about the bait containers or bait boxes and I've also given some um, Extra tips about labeling if you're on the bank land-based or uh, the new regulations that you're going to need on your pot and um, on your labels, so there you have it guys stay tuned guys and um, Yeah, we'll talk to you in the next video until next time. God bless